and James and David Sharp. Can you just talk about the versatility of how that makes you more comfortable knowing that even if Rodney's out, Trent's out, you can plug and play whoever in there? Yeah, that uh, gives you a lot of confidence as a quarterback. Um, this game is all about up front, you know. Um, doesn't matter who you are, skill position guy, quarterback. Uh, you know, we're not going to win football games unless your D-line's playing good and your offensive line's playing good. So whoever's in those spots, and sure enough, those are where the most injuries happen, right? It's in the de offensive and defensive line. So um, you know, when you're a backup offensive lineman in this league, you can't prepare like that. You know, you got to prepare that you're up every week, that you know, you're the starter because you're always, as we, as we learn, one play away. So I uh, have a lot of confidence in those guys, and they've played extremely well. What is, what is good is that offensive line has played and protected you in open lanes for Josh. How strange is it then to, to wrap your mind around the fact that that projected starting offensive line has played 10 snaps together this season so far? That's pretty crazy, right, to think that. And that uh, to think that they've played that well and they've only played 10 snaps together, right? Give a lot of credit to Coach Cable, um, to Coach Lim uh, for the work that they do, right? Uh, so so often in this business, coaches don't get enough credit, especially assistant coaches, right? Uh, those guys are superstars, man. They do a great job of preparing everybody uh, to be able to play. And when we're at practice, everyone rotates. You know, it's you know everyone. There's a certain amount of reps that those five get together, but besides that, very rarely do you see them in, in there together. Like we we make sure everyone's ready and prepared. And some guys have nicks and bruises. They need a little rest sometimes more than others. Sometimes they don't. You know, all that stuff. So. Uh, and Coach Gruden, as you know, demands perfect practice. So uh, if they're going to be in there, they got to be perfect. And they've done a great job. Imagine after a game, you usually just go home and relax a little bit. But when you got a Thursday game, did you already start in on San Diego like that night, Sunday yeah. night? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you really don't have time. You know, Co Coach Gruden said after the game, hey, congrats on the win. Now get over it. <laughs> you know, you get, you get the emotions of a fourth and one stop in front of your home crowd. And 10 minutes later, it doesn't matter. You know, as soon as it happens, it's, that's over with, right? Uh, because of these Thursday games. So we can talk about Thursday games a whole another time, but uh, we'll leave that to the CBA and all that fun stuff. So uh, when it comes to preparing your body and preparing your mind, you have to start as soon as that game ends. And uh, that's definitely what I did at my house. What kind of challenges do Ingram and Bosa present as pass rushers? Oh my gosh, they're two of the best in the whole NFL and they're on the same football team, right? Uh, you know, they, they they do a great job of uh, getting after quarterback. You see, you know what they did against a, a great quarterback in Aaron Rodgers last week, right? Um, you know the, it was it was tough for you know, Green Bay to get first downs, tough for him to move the ball at, at points, and uh, you know the, the man the man's pretty good, right? That, that offense is pretty good, right? And their defense is is that good, right? And so uh, we have our work cut out for us, that's for sure. Um, I don't I don't want to get it lost in all of this. I mean, we lost to them twice last year, right? You know, we, you know, we need to get this win. We need to make sure we handle this and take care of business. Obviously, he's got a bigger role than originally planned for him. How is he sort of involved into that? Yeah, I think he's probably excited about that, right? You know, um, when he first signed up, you know, a couple days or whatever later, like Antonio Brown, we got him too. And, uh, you know, it looks in his mind, okay, well, I understand Antonio's good. And, you know, he'll get a lot of catches. I'll get mine now. He's not here. I'm gonna get a lot of catches, right? So he had to be excited. And he's he's made the most of it. I think we, you know, could all say it's money well spent, right? You got the man. The man's a really good player. Um, you know, he works his tail off. Very selfless. Doesn't care. Um, you know, if he has a touchdown or if Hunter Renfro catches the game winner. I think that it's a common theme in that room that they, they just support one another. Um, except Marcel, they still treat him like a rookie. But uh, you know, they they do a really good job. Uh, I'd say of just. Just doing their, doing what the coach asked them to do. Um, if I have to clear it out full speed, he does it. If if we ask him, hey, we need you to run this route that no one's ever seen before, he runs it and he scores on it, right? Um, you know, I can't say enough good things about Tyrell. I'm glad that we have him. John uh, was talking yesterday about uh, encouraging you to, to learn how to play left-handed when teams are taking away uh, Darren or some of the top uh, targets that you have. What when did that uh, term first come up, and what does that mean for you? Well, that's the New England way, right? That's how the New England defenses want you to play. So I'll let you do the math when that came up uh, uh, and when that term started coming around. Um, but that's just how New England wants you to play. They want you to play left-handed. So that's where it came from. You've got Chris Rivers plenty of times. I'm sure watched him for a long while. What stands out about him? What, what impressed him the most to you? What, what... With Phillip? Uh, he's, su he's super consistent, man. And 
he doesn't care if he throws three picks or three touchdowns. He's super competitive, right? Um, the man just gives it his all, super smart. He's not ever going to beat you with his legs, right? He's not going to scramble around for 100 yards in a game or anything like that, um, which is even more credit to him and what he's been able to do throughout his whole career. He's one of the best to ever play this game. Don't Let's not get it twisted. So many times people always just look at wins and say, well, this guy has more – all right, let's pump the brakes. It's a team sport, right? Uh, Phillip Rivers is definitely one of the best to ever play. He's one of the smartest to ever play this game. They put everything on his shoulders, and to do that year in and year out and still be productive is just crazy impressive to every quarterback. You know, everyone that just watches him and knows, you know what he's what was asked of him every every single year. It's really, really impressive. You had the uh, the rollout touchdown to Tyrell a couple of weeks ago, and then the other day against Hunter, the opposite way. I don't know if you saw the next-gen stats thing. said hmm. you scrambled 21 yards in total, which is the most you've ever done on a single play where you completed the pass <laughs> on the one to Renfro. Oh. Just the whole, the whole evolution, though, of you getting out of the pocket and moving, something John's been talking to you about for a while. Do you yeah. feel that, that's, that now you're getting comfortable with that? The evolution of analytics. Uh, <laughs> gosh dang. Who comes up with this stuff? I don't, I don't know. Let's just complete passes. Um, uh, we, we talked about it a lot in the, in the sense of not by the yardage yeah. number specifically. But uh, you know, we talked about um, extending plays, right? When it's not there, can we create offense? And as you saw on Hard Knocks, coach chasing me around yelling. Yeah. And that was not just for the camera. We did that almost every day uh, after practice at special teams period in between drills um, that was something we emphasized and it's something that all season long and it's not just outside the pocket even on the first one to foster buying time backwards in the pocket to the right you know finding a window just buying more just buying time right um, and it's something we drill all the time Oli just last week had me doing that drill where I'm buying time in the pocket for a few seconds find a, find a window in the end zone buying time roll out throw a touchdown you know uh, so it's stuff that we work literally all the time, and it's fun that all season long, even since week one all the way till now, you're seeing it happen for first downs or for touchdowns. It's really, or even throwaway. He talks about throwaways sometimes the best play, right? Um, you know, getting out of the pocket, avoiding a sack, throwing a it away. For the field. That, that, that was one of his favorite plays yeah. of the whole game, you know, because then it helps Daniel. Mm -hmm. Dan, it was Daniel's favorite play of the whole game. I can <laughs> promise you that. Um, you know, but uh, just all that stuff. That that. It, it was harped on, and he's on me all the time. He never, never lets me be comfortable, and he, he, he hasn't let me be comfortable with that all year. It's been good. Has it been a smooth transition for you? I mean, you've always been mm -hmm. seemed like you've been at your best years past when get it out, yep. get it out. You know, when, yep. and, but now to, it, to it, add that to your game. You know, with uh, with the way our offensive line is playing, you can. It's easier to be honest. You know, yeah. you buy buy in time because you have. You know, a little bit more time to do some things like that um, and extend plays and stuff like that. Uh, you know, because I'm always going to try and beat you with my arm. You know, I'm just going to I'm going to sit in the pocket. I'm going to try and beat you with my mind and my arm. Um, but now, uh, when those things die down and people cover things, which happens in this league, being able to extend plays with our offensive line, it's you know, it puts a dagger sometimes. You know, when you can extend a you know a third down, get out running and hit a first down, or get out running and score, and uh, hit Foster Moreau in the end zone. <laughs> I know you've answered this uh, before this season, but just again, uh, how fun has it been for you to see just the transformation of Waller uh, this year, turning into one of the uh, stars at his position in this league? Absolutely, he's 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 the best tight end in the NFL, and I'll, you know, again, well, how it works nowadays is we wait a couple of years and then people start saying it, but he already is, and he has a lot to work on, um, and there's other guys that have a lot more production than him, obviously, but uh, talent-wise, when it comes from Blocking, running, uh, even rushing with the football sometimes. Um, he's hands down one of, if not the best in the whole NFL. And it's, it's really fun for me to know that he's really young also. So uh, he'll, he'll make my job easy for years to come. It's the, the guy, his story alone, we can all get moved by his story. I never want to lose sight of that for his whole career, where he's come from and what he's overcome. I called you a uh, coach on the field with the way your knowledge of the offense is this year. When did you sort of, that, that hit into you, that, that level of not where, where you know the offense as well as he did, when did that sort of hit in for you? It really was when we came back for the, for the OTA, or not OTAs, but April, whenever we come back. Uh, uh, we came back and then just going over things again, it's like it just clicked so much clearer, you know, because there's so much volume of our offense and it's like, like, 
the guys were bringing in things like that. It, that was the thing he told me. He said, we're going to work on scramble drills, and you got to teach this offense with me because we had a lot of new guys coming in, new starters at certain spots. And, uh, and I don't know, I just took more ownership of it. I guess as I get older, I'm a little bit more impatient too, <laughs> uh, which I'll work on. But, you know, just really coaching those young guys, you know, and it's uh, impatient in a good way, just demanding, right? We don't have time to wait. No, you got to get it right now, you know, that kind of mentality. Um, so Coach Gruden's rubbed off on me and some of that for sure. Is it not two more guys. that your, probably your two best seasons have been the years that you're in the second year in the system? Is it, sorry, what was the no, first it's part? Is it not a coincidence that 2016 and this year, second year in the system, is probably yeah. your two best? It, it's definitely not a coincidence, man. Um, anytime you see people playing together for long periods of time, a coach and a quarterback, um, usually it just continues to get better. You know what I mean? Um, uh, and I'm thankful for that for sure. What's made a uh, kind of red run? What's made you comfortable, we'll comfortable throwing a hundred red run third down? He's just, uh, he's very smart. Um, you know, sneaky athlete, uh, hard worker, good locker room guy, willing to put his all out there for the team. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, he's uh, the number one thing about him is his, his understanding of football, honestly, coverages. Uh, he has a good feel for the game. He runs his routes, uh, not not textbook. You know, not not how you put it up on a you know on a on a, on a video. You know, he he has his own feel to the game. And uh, early on, you know, was, we, we wanted to be so precise. No, do it like that. But then it started to get like, no, actually, you just get open. You know, we need you at that spot at this time. You just do it how you want to do it. And as we started to see it, he started to play more freely. You know, he, he wasn't so, you know, a guy like that, you don't want to put a box around him, right? You know, sometimes, uh, you know, we can do that as quarterbacks or sometimes coaches, you know, we got, you have to do it like this. And it's like, you know, the guy just doesn't see it the same way we do. And you, uh, Hunter does see it the way we do, but he also has a good feel for his game and uh, work in that slot. And so we just sometimes just say, hey, we need you in these parameters, but get your feel and put your spin on it, which is what, it's really cool how Coach does that with his receivers. He's like, I need you here at this point. You can put your spin on it, but if you're not there, I'm gonna rip you, you know what I mean? Uh, but he, he's done a good job of doing that. Last one. Say Jones got here like, during the bye week and last week he had the most snaps of any, any receiver. What have you seen from his acclimation uh, since that point? Since yeah, he got here? it's unreal how much he's uh, picked up, you know, because. I say it all the time, this is not easy to learn, especially for someone who is just in a different system to come in and just three or four weeks into it, just, oh man, you know, get thrown into this, right? And uh, he's hit the ground running and never once have I seen him come out here and even make a mistake, you know? Like he's been on it every time. And the way he practices, he practices with that effort and that, uh, that tenacity, which you love in a receiver. You know, some receivers, uh, you, you've, you've probably seen them at practice sometimes, they don't really look into it, you know? And he's definitely not that guy. He's always into it, always busting his tail. Even if I throw the ball to Hunter, he's sprinting to go get a block. And that, that's, the, that's winning effort, you know, that's how you build a winning culture.